Okay, so it is six o'clock. We do have two councils to call into session. So I'll call in the one for the city of Barrie. Uh, I don't know if Mayor Watson is on. So whoever would ring the bell for Montpelier. Is Jack there? Jack, sir. Jack, you can ring the bell. I just got off the phone with Mayor Watson. She's expecting to be on. Um, Are we recording, Teddy? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to open the meeting for Central Vermont Public Safety Authority Board. Okay, thank you. Mayor Watson just joined. And then as soon as Mayor Watson is able, uh, we'll have her call the meeting to order for Montpelier. Um, hey there, uh, this is Ann Watson. So um, I am just counting noses here. I see that there are four of us at least here from the city of Montpelier. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and call uh, the uh, Montpelier City Council to order. And I'm going to turn it back over to either you, Lucas, or to the CDPSA group. Okay, so I'm just going to note for the record, uh, we are, I don't think we have any adjustments to the agenda. Well, well I don't see, but there is allowed in ours for a public comment. So, uh, sir, if you have, you have two minutes to be recognized. Go ahead. Right now? Yep. Or do you, need the mic or up? Um, you should be able to be picked up from that microphone there. So uh, you've all heard this. I'm Steve Olivier from Montpelier. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have met all of you. Um, you've all heard the old adage that you pay consultants to tell you what you want to hear. Unfortunately, this is more complicated and that there are more than half a dozen stakeholder entities involved here. Capital Fire Mutual Aid System, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority, Barry City Council, Barry Fire Service, Montpelier City Council, Montpelier Police Dispatch Operation called Cap West, Central Vermont Hospital. And most importantly, there's all those who need to, may need to call for help someday and will also be asked to help pay for these expensive systems. And they have different interests, agendas, and poor horses in this race. This Televate report was originally fashioned as a simple communications needs assessment. It came, in sh came up short in some areas, long in others. And the report, despite its shortcoming, makes clear a few things. One, that we need a new region-wide radio system soon. And two, that it's all about the governance. Good governance begets financing to actually build the radio system. Solid engineering and design come next, maybe a different consultant. Public safety is too important to continue to stubbornly defend turf and to act like we're a lot of organizational or municipal islands. The ambivalence among the two city councils and lack of technical understanding has dragged us out for years too long. Regional systems are cost-effective, efficient, and better able to be maintained with broad user base. It's also about the technology, funding, and a lot will be required will gravitate towards well-designed and well-integrated solutions. I encourage you to read the emails between Kim Cheney and Senator Leahy's staffer, as there is clear, sober thinking there. It also took, also take a look at my comments from prior years. The transcript of my comments from November, 2018 to the joint, these same two joint city councils are still on point. We've learned the hard way that in rural Vermont, both fiber and cellular coverage will not be built adequately by market forces without solutions being developed with public sector dollars, with solid plans, with consideration, cooperation. It just won't happen. Opportunities will go to those best prepared with future-proof plans, integrating fiber, fiber, cellular broadband, and storm-hardened radio systems for resilience and rapid disaster recovery. So time is the essence. We need to move forward quickly on a regional cooperative governance approach, equitably distributing the costs among the cities and small towns fairly to everyone in view. A flexible model that allows some towns to join. Donna, can you mute yourself? Yeah, and you're, you're welcome. 
one more second. A flexible model that allows some towns to join as voting members later. Only by doing this and getting started now will we be able to finance and deploy an integrated public safety grade communication system quickly in the coming years and maintain it well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So is there anybody else for public comment before we get started? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, the item which we have warrant here is the CVPSA Televate Communications Report presentation. And Donna Bate, thank you for coming and uh, turning the floor over to you for the presentation. Well, thank you. And I know sometimes it's harder to hear when we're in person with masks and if we're all remote. So if people who are remote can't hear me, let me know. I'll try to talk loud and I'm sorry, you may think I'm shouting at you. I know it can be a problem behind the mask. Uh, my pleasure to be here. It's really, we don't do it enough. Uh, I'm really miss not having us all in one room. But I, I just wanna give a little background to Central Vermont Public Safety Authority, which I just call Public Safety Authority. And, and before I turn it over to our consultants, I also wanna hear a little bit maybe from Doug, <coughs> who is the former police chief in Montpelier. I started with this project in 2016 when I was chair of the Central Vermont Chamber of Commerce. George Malik really believed in regionalization of public safety. And he convinced me it was the way to go to maximize our resources not only just money, but people. So you could have one big truck and share it and know where it was. And personnel, people wouldn't have to leave police stations or fire stations to get a, a graze or a different position that we wouldn't be competing against one another. And we could also offer our employees better opportunity, more training and growth professionally. And when we did the study, we actually found that the population of around 28,000, 30,000 was a really good core regional, not too big, not too small, but that's when it starts to pay off when you buy things and start coordinating in one place. So I was sold on it. And so we started this committee. We had the Regional Planning Commission, we had the municipal towns, we had the town's professional, uh, public safety professionals there, and we created a committee in 2009. And in 2009, that committee was the one to start on the charter for the actual public safety authority. And in 2014, they took that charter to the legislators. Now between 2009 and 2014, we had at the table, two representatives from Barry City, two from Montpelier, two from Barry Town, and two from Berlin. Now, a lot of changes happened since 2006 and 2014, select boards, lots of mindsets, and when we got to the actual charter moment in the legislature, those municipals who were chartered was just Barry City and Montpelier. But we always knew we wanted to continue it. But meanwhile, we're trying to do the best we can for the two cities and them working better together, more coordinated, looking at training for their dispatchers as well as equipment. And we feel that indeed we spent $75,000, we got a grant, that was a really good kickoff that we spent money helping Barry and Montpelier be more compatible. Uh, retired Chief Fakus really appreciated that. He felt we gave the a little momentum and focus to help Barry and Montpelier do more together. I think they were a little scared of us, you know, and it's like, we're not about taking over control. We're about com combining control, combining resources, combining our voices. And the more I look particularly into FAR and EMS, I feel like they're the stepchildren of funding. <laughs> and they have a radio system that's very different from the police radio system. And it encounters a lot more problems. And unfortunately, when we came on board, these two systems already exist. And I always get the initials messed up. And, but the police, I believe is you, you probably know, Stephen, uh, UVT and the other. You, say the two, please. Ultra high frequency. This is a very high frequency. Fire okay. Fire. Well, they're in two different systems, but we can spend money to link them. And that's a lot about what we're talking is trying to link together so people can communicate. But we also have a system that's over 30 years old. I think you're going to hear some comparisons. How would you like your phone to be over 30 years old? You already get frustrated when the battery starts dying all the time, right? But these are our first respondents do not have dependable radio systems, towers, connections. 
They lose one another in buildings. They lose the hospital when they're transporting somebody, when they're trying to transmit records about this person coming in. Or should they come in? Should they go to Burlington? I mean, we're talking about really life-threatening moments when communication is viable. We have old consoles that we're really hoping the municipals keep that commitment to replace those consoles. Because like all this 30 plus old equipment out there in the field, the consoles also are outdated. Their parts can't be, aren't readily on the shelf anymore. And when you have a crisis, you're gonna call around for the country, try to find how to put that console back together to working order. So it's, it's really important that we realize our first responders have done such a good job coping that they've really hidden this problem for a long time and, and not maybe been noisy enough, you know, the squeaky wheel. So we're trying to be their squeaky wheel here today to really to look at what is needed. Now, we had the fortune in 2000, we were actually adopted by the legislators in 2014. By 2015, we hired our first executive director. And Paco had this experience of coming out of being <laughs> deputy commissioner for the state of Vermont's Department of Public Safety. And he was really ready to go. Within six months, he made the first business plan. He actually wrote like four business plans, all of which came to the councils at one time or another, all of which were not accepted. And not only that, but we couldn't get the enthusiasm to, to really move forward. We were given a direction to do one center, everybody in one place. We came back another time, got direction to do one system with Barry and Montpelier coexisting in their own entities. That wasn't adopted. And so it's been very frustrating. But the one thing we felt we've been really good at is getting people to talk around the table. And we got a third member. That was another thing the councils wanted us to do. And we got Capital Fire Mutual Aid. And they have over, you know, 33 fire departments. That's like, they serve like, together with Barry and Montpelier, 74,000 people. Now that's a big number for Central Vermont. It wasn't quite big enough for the earmark we tried to get out of Leahy's office. But that's what I'm talking about, clout. We've got to have a combined control, combined voice, taking our resources to the state, to the feds, to get these grants that are out there for the first responders that really need it. So the technical is all gonna be Televet. Thank heavens, Rick and Dom are here. And uh, Doug, I saw you here. Would you like to say a few words before uh, we let them take over? You're muted. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh... <laughs> My name is Douglas Hoyt. Uh, as has been advertised, I'm a retired chief. Uh, uh, back in 2006, I retired from Montpelier as the chief of police. But I guess for the purposes of tonight, uh, I guess I want to go back uh, even further in time uh, to when there was the formation of what is now known as Capital West. Um, there was some pretty exciting times uh, getting the local area fire departments together to work. They were looking for a way to uh, get uh, their emergency services dispatched. Um, and the city of Montpelier was also uh, looking for a way to engage its employees in, in doing that kind of activity uh, so that there was some financial benefit to the city. Uh, that also would allow us to increase our capacity and <clears throat> meet the needs of the regional fire departments. And I think for the most part that that occurred, uh, it's still an uh, ongoing process um, that has been still maintained by the city of Montpelier. But even back then, uh, there were issues with uh, fire service communications and, and police communications. And along the way, at least in my plea, we were able to try to uh, solidify our communication capabilities. Uh, but even today, I think uh, Chief Fakus, uh, who recently retired, and Chief Pete, who is now the chief in my plea, would acknowledge that uh, all of those communications are 
are weak and need to be addressed. Um, a recent conversation with uh, a person that's very familiar in the fire service <clears throat> would acknowledge that the uh, weakest links, at least from the dispatching uh, end, is is the consoles. Uh, and the consoles, as you all well know, there's a set of consoles in Barrie and a set of consoles in Montpelier. And they are the main link to get the information to the um, to the persons that are responding in the field. Uh, once upon a time, there was nine nine one one services, um, and it was hosted in Montpelier, and that, in my opinion, worked very well to provide uh, real time services to the residents. But I say without any um, malice, somewhere along the line, the uh, state of Vermont believed that they had a better plan and the Universal Service Fund was a way for them to um, support their activities. And all of a sudden, 911 services left the local area and, and went to the state of Vermont uh, Department of Public Safety. Um, I'm not even going to offer an opinion as to whether that was a, a wise move or not, but I would only offer up that I think they're trying to figure out another way to handle 911 services. So that, that could be a question for, for the region going forward, but um, because it would be a way to provide those services and, and again, using that same universal service fund to support that. But those, those are all part of thinking about what it is we're going to do with our communications. Uh, at any time during tonight's meeting, if you'd like to ask me some questions, I'd be more than glad to answer. But I really would like you to have the opportunity to hear from Dominic and Rick. Um, the Televate report, in my opinion, will point you in the right direction uh, to address the most needy issues and uh, I thank you. Okay, Rick, Dom, which one's starting? Uh, this is Rick and um, um, I apologize. My video has gone out and I have been trying to correct it, but um, I, I be, I'm sad to say I haven't been able to fix it. However, um, let me make sure that I can share my screen. You, the host has disabled the participant screen sharing. So if you could please allow me to share our screen. Dominic and, and I will, uh, will get started on the presentation. So the sheet, screen sharing has been given. You Thank you very much. Um, let me, all right, so please let me know um, if you can see my screen. Uh, you clearly can't see me, but let me know when you can see the screen and I'll put it in the presentation mode. We can see it. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so let me get started. I'll put it in presentation mode. Okay, all right, so uh, everyone, um, on behalf of myself, uh, Rick Burke, I'm the managing partner of Televate, and Dominic Arcuri, uh, our, our subject matter, matter expert. Um, on this project. We uh, appreciate the opportunity to have um, worked with uh, CVPSA and its members and partners on this project. And uh, we really have enjoyed um, this program and, and, and really think at, at this stage of the game, it's good that we've extended um, this presentation and, and I wanna share our recommendations to all of you. Um, Dominic and I are going to uh, collaborate. I'm going to present some aspects of the presentation. Dominic is going to take over others. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions uh, along the way. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, we, will, uh, we will walk through this as uh, 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 carefully and as uh, openly as possible. And um, with that said, is there any, any of First, thank you to Donna and to Doug for, for setting up the presentation and to all of you for attending. Is there anything uh, else we need to uh, 
um, to discuss before we move into the presentation? No, nope, you're all set. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so our agenda here, uh, we're going to go over our project objectives and the scope, um, present to you our key findings, our recommendations, uh, discuss next steps, and then any open discussion uh, that's required. And of course, along the way, we can do that as well. So as we, as we put this presentation, uh, this program together, it was, uh, there was a, a very uh, well-written um, uh, statement of work uh, released RFP by CVPSA, um, you know, with, with a request to uh, conduct a telecommunication needs assessment for the central Vermont region. And as part of that uh, effort, we were requested to document and assess existing communication systems. Um, those for central fire, I think it should be capital fire mutual aid systems, Montpelier, city of Montpelier, and the city of Barry, and, and the city, Barry city. So, you know, we, we spent a great deal of, of time uh, interviewing, surveying, uh, spending time on site, visiting sites to, to, to collect sufficient information to support the effort. And, 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 you know, as part, you know, important deliverables as a result of the project was to identify gaps in these systems um, and then to determine options and, and the cost to upgrade the systems to meet end user requirements. Uh, and then to provide uh, next steps and recommendations. And um, we did that. And so the task, there was two primary tasks that really incorporated a, a variety of different deliverables and subsets, but you know, the program was really to conduct a, a complete region-wide assessment of existing public safety communication systems and to define stakeholder requirements and the second task was to propose solutions with designs and cost estimates for resolving indoor and outdoor radio dead zones in Barry City, Montpelier, and for CFMAS service areas. So uh, we were fortunate to be building upon a body of work that had been in production in the region for some time. Um, the stakeholders and first responders uh, of, uh, of the network were very aware of, of their, you know, of their strengths and weaknesses. And, and what we did, you know, was to work directly with them and to, you know, bring our collective, the Televate is a 20 year old business and Dom and I between us have 70 years of experience or more um, in this industry. And so we have, and, and we relied on other members of our team, but we have a tremendous body of experience um, in, in assessing and building, deploying and operating um, public safety radio um, and other, and other networks are, that are part of the overall process. So to briefly go over our key findings, um, I'm gonna, first we're, we're gonna discuss them both from a perspective of the police and, and the fire and the fire um, firefighters um, in the in the community, and and it also includes because the dispatch um, personnel are so integral to the process. You know, certainly they they were part of and and a part of the study, and they also made important contributions. And um, you know, we'll, we'll, what we what we mentioned to you will also include um, insights about their needs. So on the police side, and it's, it's interesting to note right up front that the police and the fire uh, communications are on two different radio frequencies. And, and those, in, those two frequencies are not interoperable um, without there being some middleware, you know, either it be a dual band radio or, or the ability to patch, you know, patch their systems. So, you know, you, you, they're in different frequencies and one happens to be better in building than the other, providing and building coverage. However, our, our key findings here for the police LMR was that, you know, there's improvements that are required um, for in-building coverage. And, um, you know, it, it really has a lot to do with, um, you know, the fact that there's not a lot of radio sites that provide uh, enough RF to get into buildings, but also your buildings. Uh, I, I think if, if I remember right, it's a, you know, you're, you're, you're granite buildings and they, they are very difficult to get radio signals into. Um, and, um, you know, there's also for the fire department, for the police department and, and general for all public safety responders in the community, 
you know, there, there's a need for enhanced interoperability between the public safety, between the first responder community uh, and a need for con continuity of operations between them. Communication plans and SOPs, and we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time about those otherwise. Um, so the, also the, your, your dispatch consoles, as, as Doug mentioned, are really well operating at well beyond their life cycle um, and they are, they are outdated and they are, uh, they are at risk of failure at any time. Um, they are just old school and are not modern and are not, you know, run the risk of, of being reliable. And I will also, you know, take this time before I move into the you know, discussion on the, on the fire, fire communications network, that as a, the, the reason that you've been able to operate so successfully, even with the age and, and outdated uh, equipment that you have and the lack of, 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 of ideal communications is because of the skills and, and, and hard work and, and, and ingenuity of, of the communicators, of the first responders and the dispatchers communicate with them. Um, those folks work very, very hard and work around a lot of obstacles that are just not common and not really acceptable for public safety communication networks. They make them work, but it, it's really a testament to them. But these systems are, uh, they, they are antiquated um, and they are at the risk of failure at any given time. Um, and so, you know, as it says for the fire LMR systems, the equipment is antiquated, as, uh, as Donna mentioned, 30 years uh, old technology, um, and they are not really properly configured right. They are not operating in a manner that's conducive to reliable, interoperable communications between, you know, the, the region and the cities. Um, there's also only a single frequency for multiple departments, which you know, leads to extreme congestion at times when, you know, in the event that there's multiple, um, you know, responses. So you've got multiple mission critical uh, events and, and we're all communicating on a single uh, radio network, uh, a wide area network. I mean, there are, there are radio to radio uh, frequencies available, but we really need more channels. Um, also, you know, the, as I said, the same frequency communicating to and from dispatch um, and between firefighters um, who are on their way to the event, um, everyone is on the same network and same channel. So there's plenty of congestion on that radio channel. And, and to make matters even worse, there is tremendous interference on that rate and on that single frequency. There's interference from users in Canada, taxi cab uh, 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 communications, as well as from elsewhere within the state of Vermont. So, you know, you've got kind of a per perfect storm here that, that really has created, you know, communication uh, gaps that delay and hamper response and put your first responders and the communities they serve at risk. Um, there are coverage gaps throughout the service area, not just within the buildings. The, build, the, the buildings have a, even a, you know, even a more severe issue. Um, and, um, you know, the, there's also a lack of redundancy. So we build the best practice in building and operating public safety communication systems is to have redundancy in your system so that in the event of a failure of a backhaul link or a radio site or a radio channel, that there is a backover. This is building, you know, building your networks to mission critical grade requires that there be a built-in redundancy um, at both the power systems and, and the communication infrastructure. So, you know, with that said, there's just a high risk of equipment failure at any given time. Um, and lives are at risk because uh, of, of the, you know, of the status of the network as it is, is operating today. Um, we're, we're, there's, a, there's a risk that critical information is delayed in getting to the, the, the first responders, the fire the fighters in the field, and to and from. I mean, we, we, we witnessed, um, you know, hands-on uh, observation, visiting sites, and communicating with the responders about how they communicate, how they relay, how they have to, you know, move their, themselves to a position where they can relay back to one another, um, where multiple towers serve a given incident, 
and and they you know the the dispatchers and the firefighters need to communicate off off of multiple sites to get there. It's it's just in, in our opinion, this is one of the most uh, um, this is one of the poorest systems we've witnessed over our careers. And I, I hate to be so blunt about it, but it's important to be that direct about about um, the risk of your of your system, um, particularly on the firefighter the firefighter system today and. Now, I want to move into recommendations. But before I do, are there any questions um, uh, before we move into our, our, the list of recommendations that we've provided? So I'm going to ask a couple, and it's more about the scope of the project itself. Yes. Uh, for the system coverage for Washington County, do you have a percentage or the number of municipalities that would cover? I mean, I, Washington West covers a certain number. We we have coverage maps uh, that will that we are, that we've brought along and we can present them to you. So the the, the answer is is yes, we have that information. Um, and uh, Dom is going to uh, we're, we'll discuss it a, a, a bit later. But okay. we do have coverage maps of the uh, of the current and and future you know future recommended network. Then I'll save the rest of my questions until after the rest of the presentation. All right, sir. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to let Dom uh, talk about uh, the recommendations, and um, there you go, Dom. Thank you. All right, thanks, Rick. And also, I want to uh, thank Donna and Doug for giving us uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, to work with them on this important study and to uh, um, be here with you tonight. We're very uh, honored to be here and be able to uh, uh, provide our findings and recommendations. And also to echo Rick's point, uh, certainly take my hat off to the uh, uh, local stakeholders and the uh, administrators uh, have, have done an excellent job of uh, maintaining this system through very difficult uh, situations and, and keeping it uh, operational up to this point. But it is uh, it definitely, as Rick mentioned, one of the uh, uh, you know, most uh, antiquated and uh, uh, older systems uh, that we've seen. Uh, some of the recommendations, and you'll see that these uh, will mirror uh, some of our findings, of course. Uh, we provide uh, a recommendation for at least an additional radio site uh, required within uh, the, the city of Montpelier to provide uh, improved downtown communications. Uh, we also uh, will provide on the fire side, we'll recommend a, a dual system approach, which will include additional sites in the uh, city areas of both Montpelier and Barrie. And uh, on the police side, uh, some of the, one of those sites is mo will most likely be applicable to assist with uh, the police in building communications as well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a vehicular repeater is a, a tool that can be used to help expand coverage uh, even further uh, where you uh, might not have uh, a tower site within the uh, vicinity or uh, might not have adequate coverage to a portable radio. Uh, vehicular repeaters are in use uh, today, and uh, we believe that their use should be expanded to help expand the coverage to uh, uh, portable radios. Uh, one, one item, uh, some of you may be aware, others may not, that uh, getting coverage to a mobile radio or a radio mounted within a vehicle uh, is significantly easier than a smaller portable radio. As you might guess, the mobile radio has a higher power uh, has a better antenna system. Uh, so the vehicular repeater can take that coverage to the mobile radio and help expand it out to uh, local users on a, using a portable. Also, as Rick mentioned, uh, we recommend improvements in interoperability and uh, feeding into the cont continuity of operations. We recommend a, a task force to uh, put together a uh, interoperability plan uh, throughout the region. Uh, Rick mentioned that we have the fire service operating on uh, the VHF frequency band, police operating on the UHF frequency band. Uh, so there needs to be a plan in place as to how those agencies, as well as the multiple law enforcement agencies, you know, we have, of course, uh, uh, 
Barry City, Montpelier City, there's uh, Capitol Police, there's Washington County Sheriff, all that need to talk to each other on occasion. So that requires uh, uh, documented procedures uh, to follow and how continuity of operation comes into play when there are some, uh, uh, some difficulties or some uh, interruptions in uh, various systems. Go ahead, please, Rick. Yep, sorry. Uh, on the on the fire side, on the fire side, as uh, Rick mentioned, uh, uh, the uh, fire communications is in a dire situation. Uh, re we recommend a regional uh, standards based uh, P25 is a uh, uh, type of digital communication standard developed specifically for public safety. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, one of the agencies uh, currently Montpelier uh, Police is, is using that type of system already. We recommend the uh, fire system be developed to be capable of uh, P25 operations. That also assists with uh, the potential for getting uh, grant funding to assist with the regional system as well. Uh, a simulcast system is what we recommend, which will use multiple sites to expand the coverage uh, throughout the uh, larger area, the broader area, uh, which with all the uh, uh, departments extends uh, throughout Washington County. And uh, uh, in addition to that, in some neighboring counties as well. Uh, that is all recommended, of course, to improve coverage. Uh, we also uh, recommend that vehicular repeaters can be useful here as, as well. Uh, to expand the uh, portable radio coverage. And uh, as, as Rick mentioned, congestion is one of the key uh, issues that we experienced uh, uh, here in uh, central Vermont. Uh, the single frequency being used for multiple uh, departments, a large number of departments, as well as that same frequency being used both to dispatch first responders, as well as first responders talking back to dispatch, talking to each other on scene, uh, et cetera. Uh, so uh, we would recommend certainly pursuing and licensing additional radio channels. Uh, some of the local uh, stakeholders have already identified potential uh, frequencies and have begun to license those. Uh, so uh, we certainly applaud uh, the hard work that they've done to date and we recommend that be uh, continued and incorporated into the regional system approach. Uh, there should be separate frequencies, both for the city operations versus Capitol Fire. Uh, they have, of course, different coverage areas and typically deal with different types of issues. Uh, so again, to reduce con congestion, we recommend uh, separate channels and also uh, free uh, the search should uh, include, of course, interference-free VHF channels. Uh, there are uh, currently some interference issues being experienced. So new channels that are free of interference uh, need to be located and licensed appropriately. Uh, one additional thing uh, we recommend is including additional receivers for the what we call the TAC channels or the technical channels. Uh, these are different channels typically used on scene uh, for uh, first responders talking to each other. And generally that uh, would not be heard by dispatch, uh, which is a safety issue. So including additional receivers uh, throughout the coverage area would allow dispatch to monitor on scene communications uh, to uh, ensure they know what's going on in case additional resources uh, need to be dispatched. <clears throat> Next, Rick, thank you. Uh, we've already talked uh, about the dispatch consoles. Of course, uh, the critical upgrade is needed uh, due to their age and due to their lack of support uh, from current manufacturers. Uh, and they are uh, currently two different types of uh, consoles used at the two different uh, uh, dispatch centers. Uh, you'll also hear me refer to PSAPs. Uh, that's an acronym uh, for Public Safety Answer Point, uh, which many of you, uh, uh, you know, might know as a dispatch center. Uh, currently, there's different consoles being used, so we recommend uh, upgrading uh, both of those and using a similar uh, similar type. 
which will allow uh, for greater redundancy and capability for either PSAC to take over operation for the other should that uh, uh, requirement occur. Uh, we recommend a common uh, CAD system also between the two PSAPs. Uh, what's being used today is a uh, kind of a uh, local sourced uh, system. Uh, I believe Valcor is the uh, uh, system name. Prim right now it's primarily a records management system and, and not a uh, uh, full-time uh, CAD system that would normally be used by uh, public safety dispatchers. Uh, but we do recommend upgrading to a, a CAD system for both PSAPs. And uh, recently there was a connection uh, installed uh, between the two uh, PSAPs, which has uh, been very effective to uh, allow them to be able to hear uh, the activity in uh, each uh, PSAP to help reduce some of the uh, congestion and help coordinate. Uh, we certainly recommend that that uh, be a redundant circuit uh, to uh, uh, provide the redundancy necessary uh, to enhance uh, continuity of operations should one of the uh, dispatch centers uh, be uh, unable to communicate. So Dom, as we uh, move to the next slide, I'm going to encourage us to uh, pick up the pace so that we give uh, time for questions. So um, certainly. Um, yeah, so let's just you know re let's not put in too much detail unless asked. All right, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, regional interoperability. Uh, we, we've talked about this uh, previously. Previously, we need to document the radio communications plan so that different agencies can effectively speak to uh, one another. Uh, those plans have to be regularly uh, uh, practiced in training and exercise, and uh, also uh, the network operating procedures uh, need to be documented and followed uh, very closely, especially when we move to a regional system. Uh, in terms of broadband systems, uh, there are some uh, potential capabilities or enhancements <coughs> that could be incorporated using cellular broadband. Obviously, that depends on coverage, and coverage needs to be improved in that area. Uh, the uh, state needs to coordinate with the FirstNet authority, uh, building out a, a public safety broadband network to uh, identify where coverage is needed and uh, where it will be in, uh, incorporated. Uh, the use of uh, push-to-talk or uh, uh, Mission critical push to talk type services over cellular can provide an enhancement and additional communications once there is uh, sufficient broadband coverage. And also, of course, once uh, there is broadband coverage in uh, certain areas, there are a number of public safety focused applications um, that are specific to either the fire discipline or law enforcement discipline, which can uh, greatly improve public safety response. Those should, uh, a plan should be developed for those. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about governance here. So uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier when we started, uh, governance is really the foundation uh, of, of doing good uh, communications on a regional basis. A number of uh, stakeholders, a number of owners of the network. Uh, um, right now, the, the CVPSA is a, is a functioning organization and governance organization. And, and they are, um, you know, they, they are doing the best they can under their charter and under the capabilities and, and constraints that they have. Um, we recommend um, in support of this, uh, this governance, enhance the governance to integrate city leadership um, and, and to the uh, effect that we could, you know, include uh, some of the town members into it, so the select board membership could be brought on. But we need city leadership in there to support uh, us, and you know, support us in determining funding and procurement capabilities. Um, does the charter need to be expanded to include, um, you know, town membership? We certainly recommended it. And another thing, you know, as, as mentioned, greater fire chief participation. And you know the 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 optimal use of committees, subcommittees, and working groups to advise the the uh, CVPSA board on on how to best uh, implement and operate and and maintain 
um, uh, the networks uh, if that if they have a role in that. So defining their role is going to be an important um, process as well. Um, we, as part of the project, as part of our requirement, we actually looked at regional partnerships, um, a very successful method here to, to both uh, invite others onto networks and to uh, utilize their assets and, and actually have them bring fine funding to the table um, is prudent. So we really, we spoke to uh, CV, CV Fiber, um, a, a, a local broadband entity, a state entity that's uh, building out fiber optic networks. We, we met with the Washington Electric Co-op, the Vermont uh, Electric Power Company, um, and, and you know, certainly the state of Vermont has uh, capabilities. We didn't directly talk to them, but, but members of the team of the, uh, of the stakeholder team did. So partnerships are very valuable and can be very beneficial to building and operating um, a robust regional uh, radio ne communication networks. Um, so with that said, um, are there any questions right now? We, and, and I know I want to be cognizant of our time. We're at 646. Um, we could give you a little bit of overview of the radio network. I know there was a question about the coverage. Um, but Donna, uh, I, I, will, I will turn to you to ask if we should talk a little bit more about you know, the network, or should we, you know, do take time to talk about what we've uh, um, presented so far? Well, I think you might want to show the map. It's just a couple of slides away for coverage. One yes, ma'am. And then maybe uh, you can answer Lucas's question. Yeah. Do you have a map of the area of like Washington one, County? Yeah, one more slide. There you go. One slide gets cut off because of... <laughs> Our picture there. I don't know if the picture can become smaller. There you go. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, just showing the. We put together a concept uh, design for the uh, regional network. We won't see hands up otherwise. I'm sorry. Uh, did I interrupt? Is there a question? No, we're just making adjustments so that the screen where we can see hands go up would still be visible while also okay. seeing the majority of the maps on the screen. This so. is the expanded network, right, Tom? That's right. This is the uh, concept network, the recommended regional network. We also did uh, coverage maps and simulations for the current network. Uh, we don't have them here in this uh, presentation, but those uh, uh, were in the report and those can be provided. Uh, very quickly, this shows you uh, three, uh, uh, three pictures on the left is uh, a concept for an improved uh, city, dual city uh, system. What's shown here in green is coverage, and that's coverage to a very high level. That's coverage in building uh, at, uh, within the city areas. So you can see that covers the entire city of Barrie, the majority of uh, Montpelier as well. Uh, and that's, uh, that was the intention of that uh, uh, portion of the system to provide in, improved in-building coverage. In the center, you see the entire uh, Capitol Fire response area. Uh, that includes the entire uh, Washington County as well as uh, the towns uh, outside of Washington County, such as Washington and Williamstown. Uh, and parts of Orange as well. They're, uh, they're all Walden, I believe, to the north. Uh, that They're all included, so that provides uh, mobile coverage throughout that entire area. Also, we recommend uh, improving uh, the uh, reception of ambulance to the hospital uh, communications. That occurs on a separate frequency uh, but right now it has uh, very poor uh, coverage, only using a single site uh, throughout that entire service area, uh, we recommend uh, adding a few uh, receivers to uh, greatly enhance that uh, uh, coverage as well. And that's what you see in the uh, uh, map to the right. So, uh, with that said, uh, we do have we do have uh, maps on the existing network. And, and, and working very closely with, uh, with Joe Allsworth uh, and, and others, I mean, we we visited sites, uh, we mapped existing coverage, we identified uh, reliable and potentially available new sites to add to a, a preliminary design that had already been put together by CFM, by Capital Fire, which was a really good beginning and it was a simulcast network. 
which is what you really need, uh, an analog simulcast network is a cost effective um, uh, radio network technology that will enhance the, the ability to properly communicate to all responders no matter where they are in the coverage area. Um, but you know, there's the, we could go a, a little deeper into this coverage proposal design, um, um, talk about pricing and, and others, um, but I still wanna, you know, wanna be respect um, the council and all the participants time. So um, I, I don't how, think how would you like us to proceed? At this point. <laughs> no, but, just to, as I the follow-up for this, if um, yes, you sir. could do an overlay of the current signal area, the concept area, and then also, um, the municipalities or the different groups that'd be paying into this if we were to pay for the additional coverage, because from what I'm seeing, you're covering all of Washington County, but we're not including all of Washington County as part of this conversation. So if we could have that as part of the uh, later, if you can provide that information, that'd be great. We can certainly do that. Uh, Council uh, Stockwell has- Yes, uh, we, did, we did perform uh, uh, coverage and, for each of the uh, towns. Uh, included in the uh, assessment, yes. That's so this map about. here, this map here, sir, uh, gives a better idea of, of the, the the Capital Fire Service area. Um, you know, in that in that pink uh, that that peach color there, um, our, we designed a network to provide robust coverage throughout that geographic area. And in doing so, because of topography and because of ideal site locations, we get coverage beyond this. Um, service area, um, uh, and we didn't design a network to cover all of Washington County, but uh, uh, bringing them on as a partner might, you know, certainly make um, uh, be a good idea in terms of, of asset and cost sharing. I, I have a question about, I know that historically towns have left the, the Central Vermont public safety. No, 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 no. I mean, not actually left it. There were those who were talking about joining that didn't end up joining. So in, in the Capitol Fire um, District, which seems to encompass a lot of people, would those towns, would it make those towns more like, if they're benefiting from this improved service, would they be more likely to join in and pay towards it? Well, right now, because so many of them are so small, the towns are, their membership at Back Barry and Montpelier belong to Capital Fire Mutual Aid System. But the towns within there are so small. I mean, at one point I added, I counted them when uh, for the Leahy earmark, you know, that most of them are less than 2,000 people. And so, I mean, their budget, they're all volunteer fire departments, uh, is very small. But we've done some cost accounting, as such as if we actually took on this plan and took the number that Televate has given us and priced it out for a 10 year bonding, you know, it'd be like $20,000, $19,000 a year for 10 years. Uh, that's a lot for some small towns, but at least starts the discussion. And within the Capital Far network, it's all about a regional system. Right now, Montpelier and Barry provide a lot of mutual aid for free. And so they're still gonna be carrying the lion's share. They're the lion's population. But to have some increased participation from the surrounding towns in capital investment, to me, is very important. And that would be part of the discussion we would move from this study with, is then let's sit at the table with the right people at the table, form a coalition, and talk about the cost allocation. And the dispatching now happens in Montpelier and in Barrie. And I know at one point there was proposed that there would be a central central dispatching, central PSAP, but I know that, that putting a new PSAP is not an easy process and you have to apply to 911 and, and there's some, there would be some considerable costs there, right? Well, P, PSAPs are totally separate. Uh, they're outside of our immediate bailiwick. That's each city would have to decide to do that. We can certainly advocate for it because we think there are advantages because the PSAP will ultimately give you grants and access to equipment that you wouldn't have otherwise, but it's very complicated. So we're not here today, at least I'm not prepared, and Rick and Dom may be to talk about more about PSAPs. But what we've been focusing on is the level of service our dispatch centers in Barry and Montpelier now do. And because Capital FAR has all their dispatch done through Montpelier, that's our audience. 
And that's why we're not right now dealing with the PSAP issue. Thank you. But it is out there to be dealt with. And Councillor Hemmerich has his hand up. Uh, th thank you, Mayor. And thank you for the great presentation. It, it sounds like there's the systems really need a modernization. And I, I also have a governance question that Donna, you, you touched on a little bit. I know that the Barry City has fewer mutual aid towns. And, and as I understand it, and do correct me if I'm wrong, that the cities do get money from some of their or revenues from some of their mutual aid communities. And, and certainly Barry has one of the lower uh, um, per capita or median household incomes in the region. And we already have one of the highest tax rates in, in Washington County. And so absent additional members, uh, you know, what, what's the vision for a regional fair share um, where, uh, where Barry city isn't on the hook for uh, providing uh, or for new and additional costs. Uh, well, we, we feel that this is one of the things that we've asked straight up to the councils when I sent you the material for tonight's presentation was this aspect that we would like to see the Twin City team that is made up of your chiefs and um, public safety staff connect with Capital FAR and two representatives from Central Vermont Public Safety Authority and, and create a core team to sit down and say, okay, one, what kind of governance model works? If we don't like public safety authorities model, what would work for us? What kind of regional model coalition could we buy into and have people around the table who are a third, have the authority given by their councils, by their municipals to participate, work on cost formulas, come back to these governing bodies and get something that people will approve and support and make happen. I'm not here to say public safety authority is the entity to be that coalition. I'm saying we may need a whole new coalition, but we definitely got to step outside of public safety authority existence, outside of the cities, outside of Capital Far, and come together and really think without town boundaries. What does the governance model look like that will work for everyone? And be real creative and then go back to our authoritative entities and make it happen because the locals can't pay for it, but we can't substantiate and justify state and federal dollars until we work together as a group. The one thing we heard from Leahy's uh, application to Leahy and people pulled together. I mean, Doug and Joe from Barry, man, they dug right in and provided us with so much important information. It was incredible that we pulled together that last minute application I mean, you know, Leahy didn't give you much time. You know, they announced it in two weeks, it's got to be in. But we put in not only a good application, but we set a precedent. Okay, so we need better governance. We need better financial agency, a better financial standing. We know what we need now to qualify for federal grants. But until the region decides and approves of some governance model and said, this is a coalition we want, this is what we're going to call it. We're just all floundering trying to get that state and federal dollars. So Mayor Watson, I haven't had anyone from Montpelier that I've seen their hand up. I just want to make sure I gave enough opportunity for others as well. Well, thank you. Um, I can't uh, see everybody simultaneously. So I have also not seen any other hands from Montpelier. Um, I don't have any questions uh, at this time. Uh, but thank you for checking. And with that, we are almost at the end of the show. Is there any closing statements that you wanted to make? Uh, the, the closing station statement is individually, we all have the same issues. When we come together and combine the resolution and solutions for the issue, I feel we have a controlling, combining control and combining resource that can, everybody can benefit from. And so I, I hope you will consider really authorizing people to come to this core team from Barry and from Montpelier and say, let's do this. Let's come up with a new governance model. Let's throw everything out. What do we need for a governance model? What do we need for a cost formula that people feel comfortable with? And then help us convince the towns, the smaller towns, that it's worth it. So that's what I want to, and I'll come back as many times as you need <laughs> and with more information. And Televate has given me lots of slides, even if they're not available, I can bring them with the experts behind me. 
And uh, yes, yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. So, and then for the follow up, because I'm going to have some follow up questions too. Uh, do you want us to contact you directly? Yes, you can send it to me. Thank you. I'll forward them on and get it to the right people for the right answers. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I'd look for a motion to adjourn the special session from Barry City. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, nay. Okay, thank you. By unanimous consent, unless there are objections, I'm closing the Public Safety Authority meeting. And I'm going to uh, do the same without objection. Um, we will end the Montpelier City Council meeting. And thank you for all of your work on this. This is really great. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone, for coming in together. This was a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.